having the opportunity to welcome uh, a, a dedication and a blessing into our worship this morning just continues to tie us back to where we have come from, where we are right now, and where we are going. The heart of this ministry, the heart of this community, and to invite each of us to f- seek out, to pray for ways that we might be a part of walking Damson through her life that you can say 10 years from now, Damson, I remember the day you were dedicated. And now you're just a handful or whatever whatever it might be. But to be able to be a part of that, that's what we do here. So part of that involves connecting, right? And uh, we are just about ready to wrap up on our sermon series, Connect. And we've been spending, this is our eighth week in Connect. And really it's about learning God's story and really understanding the fullness of his life change in our lives, how he has changed our lives, so that we, we eventually and comfortably and, and with, with power are able to share this message, this life change that we have received with other people. Because what we know is that a story untold means lives unchanged. Okay? As, you know, remember that little song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Like, I'm not going to let the devil blow it out or hide it under a bush. Like, uh, it causes fires, for one. But also, a story that is untold is a story that does not change lives. So you think about that. Think about your story. The story of life changes. If you have never had a chance to share any, any part of that life change with someone else, you technically haven't had a chance to be a part of that life change where life change potentially could be happening. So we're wrapping this up, and today we're going to be talking about um, the, the, the step of actually reaching out to people and what that looks like. Because, you know, sometimes that cold call of just uh, approaching someone may not go very well, and it may actually be a sign that you, that, that you haven't really invested in this because there's some, there's some work that we can be doing to really let our hearts get into this and, and love it as well. So last week, Jim Peters uh, taught and, and preached for us last week, and uh, love his message. Love what he was willing to do as a life, change, life changer, an extraordinary way to share a story, to share about how he constructed his story and looked at the different pieces to be able to share that with someone else. So this week, we're actually going to be digging into a little bit more the beginning of that approach. Okay? So I want to remind you, um, as we dig into worship, on the back side of your, the key to the ministries here, uh, your program, on the back side there's that worship outline. And I invite you to follow along with that, uh, fill in the blanks, keep this with you throughout the week. You can also go on the version, the Bible app, take, click on that, find more and events, and you'll be able to find an online version of that that you can take notes on and find other scripture and, and all sorts of really good stuff to help you continue to grow. Um, save your work. So that way you don't lose it. So um, when I was in my last year of college and then four years after college and while I was in seminary, I uh, was a, um, a program director at a camp in northwestern Nebraska. And so I, I directed the programs. And um, the site managers, they're really the people that, run it, that ran it. So if that sounds really impressive as a program director, it really wasn't. It just meant I worked hard. Um, but um, they would, they also were the cooks, so they would order because they know, they knew that I loved hot stuff, and that's true, and I'm not just a show-off or an exhibitionist, my wife would say that I am, but, uh, but like, I really love hot stuff, so they would order, they'd go to these shows, and they would order a box of these habanero dusted kettle corn, or kettle chips, okay, and the, the label on them, they were, the brand was Death Rain, <laughs> And uh, even for me, uh, these chips were fairly hot. Um, I loved it because I could eat my chips before my hamburger and still by the end of the meal have spicy brownies, which I also really loved. I know that sounds gross to the rest of you, but um, loved it, loved it, loved it. Okay, so I would always get these Death Rain chips and I would eat them and um, and watch the other campers try to eat them and then eat the rest of their bags as as they couldn't finish it. Well, so one week we had the high school camp. And high school camps are a little bit more unique, a little bit more of a challenge because oftentimes by the time they're in high school and they come to a camp like that for a week, they are way too cool for school, right? And so we had to kind of be on our, on our, on our best foot forward, feet forward to be able to um, really approach them. And, and high schoolers, I see a lot of you here. Uh, you just got back from your Estes Park trip. Like, you know that you're a special breed. Uh, it takes, you know, you got you to gotta get right in there. Um, and so 
I was just, you know, I was always just on fire for Jesus when I was at camp. And I mean, just kind of a little bit, maybe too much, like overwhelming for some of the campers. And I had this one camper named Amber. And during lunch, I was just kind of, I don't know, I was singing through the, the line, and um, I'll never forget this. And this may seem really petty. This may seem really petty, but I'll never forget this um, because it actually is pretty insightful, I think, into where we are sometimes. That I was just kind of on fire that day, and Amber kind of out of the blue just said, Jason, how is it possible that you have so much energy? And so, like, the wheels are turning pretty fast in here, and I'm thinking I've got two options. Well, I have lots of options, but the two that came to mind was, well, I could tell her it's because I have Jesus running through my veins, and it's just crazy. Like, I, 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 like it charges me. It fuels me. Or I could tell her it's because of the chips. <laughs> so, of course, I was like, it's because of the chips! Like, you eat these things and you go crazy. And, and you know, and everyone laughed and thought it was funny. Um, but, like, from this day forward, or from that day forward, excuse me, um, I, have, I have thought, why did I not tell her the truth? We're at a church camp, right? Like, like we, we think we're going to be able to share our life story with someone if we're in the right context. Like, if you're smack dab in the middle of the worship center, it should be really obvious and you don't have to worry about, you know, bringing up something that's completely unrelated to your, your context at the moment. We're at church camp, and I told her that I, was, I had so much energy and joy in my life because of a bag of potato chips. Life's like that, Right? I, the thing was, I didn't, I didn't want to repel her. I didn't want to, like, scare her off and, like, give her some cliche answer and have her just, like, be like, well, there's another fanatic who's all sold out for this Jesus guy, and I, I don't want that freaks me out, so I can't do that. I didn't want to freak her out. But obviously, in the, in the context of this Connect series, I did not connect her with my life change story at all. Now, by the grace of God and the work of the Holy Spirit, I'm trusting that, like, there were some other connections working there, so that wasn't the only influence of her entire week. But that happens to us a lot, right? Like, we get our story. We know that we have encountered Jesus. We know that, we have, um, that we're growing in him, and we're seeing it, and we're, we're, we're walking through this ministry together. Um, so we know all these things. We know the life that we have, and we know the experiences we've had. But when it comes to that moment where there's an opportunity to just let a little bit of our faith out and our, a little bit of our story and a little bit of that hope out into someone else's life, suddenly we are tongue-tied and twisted. And we got nothing to say, right? Nothing comes out. And then suddenly we find ourselves talking about a bag of chips. Because suddenly we realize that the words that we actually might want to say feel foreign to us. Or we're afraid of becoming awkward or, or bringing awkward into the moment, right? You know, you're out with a friend and suddenly, you know, they're like, whoa, what's going on here? Or um, you're worried that it's, you know, the fear of the wrong time. Um, that, it's, that it's not the right time and that would ruin things and, and completely destroy the relationship that you're trying to help grow. But here's the thing. Now, uh, Jim preached on this last week too. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It's a, you can jot that down here. You don't have to wait for me to, to put it on there. Um, we're going to continue to study that next, this Sunday and next Sunday as well, um, reminding us, 1 Peter chapter 3, 15 reminds us, uh, we're not there yet, Justin, um, reminds us that we are always to be prepared. Always be prepared, Peter says, to give an answer to anyone who asks you for the reason of the hope that you have. Always be prepared to give an explanation to someone else when they ask, or you know, maybe even if it just comes up in conversation, about the hope that you have. Always be prepared. So it's saying always be prepared. Not when you go to church or when you're in the right context or you think there might be an opportunity. Like, always be prepared. You never know when the Holy Spirit's going to work up that opportunity in that moment to always be prepared. And what does it mean to be prepared? Well, friends, we've been spending seven weeks, not including this week, on preparing our story, on becoming more and more aware of how Jesus has wooed and won our heart and is working on our hearts. We've been, we've been working on this stuff. Always be prepared. 
So there's some preparation to become aware of that story. And then to give a reason for your hope. I want you also to notice what's, also, what's being included here. Jesus, Peter says, reason for your hope. So hope is what people should see in us as Jesus begins to change our lives and make us into life change. Life change. So they should see hope. They shouldn't, it didn't say that they have, a, have an explanation for your perfection or your righteousness or your superiority or your, um, your perfection or uh, your purity, your morality or any of these other things. It says you hope. Because right there are countless opportunities every single day. Now, a lot of us don't see those opportunities because, again, this is all about preparation today. And we're going to learn how to prepare more so we actually begin to see those opportunities. But we need to be prepared beyond just the speech. Because, right, we can write our story out. Like, I've got a journal full of versions of my life change story. But that's, that's, that's only the tip of the iceberg. So how do we be ready? How do we actually be prepared or become prepared? How do, we, how do we get there? You know, it's not just as easy as sometimes we like to make things as easy, right? Like if there's a behavior in your life that you'd like to stop or there's something that, uh, that you know, it's just not really working out and you're just like, oh, I'll just stop being that way. Or I'm going to start being more this way. Like it's beyond just a decision to do something. How do we actually get our hearts into a, into a place where we are prepared and that we're ready and that we have those words and we know it's not going to be so awkward. So luckily, um, God's word provides direction and insight for all things, for all things. We trust that, we believe that, we know that, that um, there's direction and guidance for this exact question. So I'm going to invite you, now we're going to turn to Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6 here. And I want to remind you today, um, if you're not following along on your smartphone or the Bible that you brought Grab a Bible on the back table here, just right as you exit the worship center, and write your name in that Bible. It's yours. It's really important that we get to have God's Word in front of us. Because if you're just hearing it from me um, on Sunday morning, like it's, it's not yours, it's still mine. But it's yours when you begin to hold it in your hand, whether it's on your screen or whether it's on, on your Bible, and, are, and, and bringing it into your own life. So I want to encourage you to do that too. Um, so look what Paul says as he's writing this letter to the church in Colossae, about this whole preparedness and about this whole reach into the community. He says, number one, so verse two, keep on praying and guard your prayers with thanksgiving. Real quickly, he says, keep on praying and guard your prayers with thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but before really studying this verse, I had never, under, never thought of gratitude or thanksgiving being a shield, a being a spiritual warfare weapon against Satan, against his, uh, dis, his destruction in prayers. Practicing gratitude. It's right there. It's, it's a powerful thing. I, I don't want to miss that here. So he says, at the same time that you're praying and you're guarding your prayers in, in gratitude, at the same time, pray for us also. Pray that God would, number, look, look at this here, open a door for the word. Okay? So he's, he's saying, I want to be prepared for this. So pray that God will, before the situation even arises, open a word for the door, a door for the word. So we can preach the secret plan of Christ. That's the, that's the life change and the, his desire to, to be a life changer in each person's life that not everyone knows about yet. And Paul says, because this is why I am in chains. This is the, the very thing. Help doors open for that. Second thing, verse 4, he says, Pray that I might be able to make it as clear as I ought to when I preach. So Paul's saying, you know, like when, I, when I'm kind of prepared and I've got this whole thing outlined, you know, Pastor Jason, when he's got his little outline on the stage thing, like help it happen in real life that my words actually are clear. As clear as when I'm just talking to a friend about something that, I, that I've understood. Let it be clear. Then he continues on and he says, verse 5, and, and he says, And for you, community, act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about what, that, what that's talking about too. Outsiders essentially being folks who have yet to hear that life change story, to welcome it into their own lives. So act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. 
the opportunity that if you're prepared, God has already opened the doors for. Verse 6, your speech should be always gracious and sprinkled with insight so that you may know how to respond to everyone. You see what the goal here is? Like, this is real life. This is, this is acknowledging all kinds of stuff. Like, hey, it's going to be awkward. Hey, you're going to worry about not having the right words. Hey, you're going to worry if it's the right time. Pray that all of that is provided for you by the Holy Spirit as you go and you witness to your story. So that's essentially what Paul is saying. So how do we get prepared? How are we ready to share parts of our life story, our life story? We pray. We pray. Okay, we spend time in prayer. Whether that's on our knees, whether that's um, in the morning uh, over a cup of coffee, or whether that's on the way back and forth with your eyes open to work, okay? Um, whether, whether that's, you know, like during your break, during the middle of the day, wh- whatever it is, you wake up in the middle of the night, prayer, okay? So we pray. So here's the things that we need to be praying for according to Paul's scripture here this morning, Paul's words here, and this is on your worship outline this morning. So first is that we pray with gratitude. We already talked about that being a powerful weapon against what Satan's trying to do to destroy the things that are good. To wrap your prayers in gratitude. To wrap your hearts in prayer. Because gratitude, friends, get this. It's really important that you get this. Okay? Gratitude for the life that you've been given. Okay? Gratitude for the life that you've been given. The life change that you've been given will continually cultivate the, your awareness of your story. Okay? Gratitude for the life that you've been given will continually cultivate your awareness of that story. So wrap it in prayer. Because we've, we've been talking about this all the way. We should each know by now, if we're following through here, we've, we've looked at the journal, it's still online. If you haven't had a chance to get to it yet, um, the sermons are all online if you want to catch up. But we should all know what I like to call, by now we should all know what I like to call of our story, the BC days, right? Um, the before Christ days, the beautiful collision, like what all happened in that moment, and the aftermath. What's it look like now? Otherwise, we should know how God has wooed our hearts, we should know how God has won our hearts, and we should know how God is working on our hearts. Simple as that. It should be, you know, I want to encourage you, journal it somewhere, write it down, process it, type it on your computer, whatever it is, jot it down on, on a tablet on your phone or whatever it is. That we should know those things and to have gratitude for them. Second is that Paul's teaching in the scripture today is he says, pray for the right opportunities. Okay, he says, pray that the door may be open for the word of God to come through. The right opportunities. Okay. Um, so what does that mean, praying for the right opportunities? Essentially, friends, the more that we meet people, and the more that we spend time p- with people, um, we'll find that we, just as other people, naturally will share what's going on in our lives, right? Like, that's how you be real. You get past the fake stuff, and you start talking about, you know, like, I'm okay, but those darn kids, or, you know, like, like uh, we're just really nervous about my job right now, or um, we just cannot get past this in our family, or whatever it is. Like, people start getting real once you get into a real conversation. It doesn't take months for that to happen. But when people start talking about their challenges, maybe it's in marriages or their finances, their jobs, they start talking, expressing worry, worry, worry or anxiety or loss, or perhaps they're faced with a difficult decision in their jobs or their relationships, their family. Perhaps you sense that someone is talking about uh, desiring a place to belong. The right opportunity, I mean, perhaps you're talking about vacation Bible school coming up in one week. Goodness gracious. Okay? Maybe you're talking about that. The opportunities. Maybe someone's just waiting. They don't know it, but they're waiting for someone to invite them into something. Maybe someone's tired of the life that they have so far. Okay? Pray for the right opportunities. If we're not praying, though, it's really hard for those opportunities for us to actually see them. The third thing then that Paul teaches is to pray for the right words. Right? Now, this is probably the biggest part of this where we freak out. We're like, well, I don't know what to say. I'm not the pastor. I didn't go to seminary. I've only been a member of this church for eight years. And I mean, like, I'm a baby. Right? Okay? Um, the thing is, it's, it's not that you're not mature enough yet. It's just that you haven't taken the chance or the time 
to kind of wrap it up. But Paul says, pray for clear words, for gracious words, for insightful words. Pray for the right words. Friends, I'll give you one hint here. You're rarely going to tell your entire life change story in one setting, okay? Um, you should know your life change story. You should have it written down or somewhere like that. You are familiar with the parts of it. And, and, but rarely are you going to sit down for coffee and then for the next 30 minutes, you know, share your story with people. Right? Like it doesn't quite work that way often. But you will have 30 beautiful seconds to share a part of your life change that is absolutely and irrevocably relevant and important to the conversation that you're having. 30 beautiful seconds, friends, to be able to share a part of what Jesus has done through the power of the Holy Spirit and the love that God has for you. 30 beautiful seconds. I mean, words like, and I wish I would have used this for Amber back in church camp. I wish I would have said, you know, this might sound really strange, or, uh, you know, Amber, not to sound cliche, but Jesus just like, like following him does that to your life. Or I know this is probably going to sound different than most people would say to you. However, okay, pray for the right words. What about like, hey, I've wrestled with that too. However, um, like we're making it through this thing, or I'm making it through this thing, or that's slowly changing in my life because you can say what Jesus is doing in my life, what God's doing in my life, the Holy Spirit as the Godhead, three in one Trinity, right? So just getting it out there. Or this, what God has been doing, or this church, or this community is making a difference in my life. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. Friends, um, I run every morning, and if I find a good pair of shoes that I like, I, you better believe it, I'm going to tell someone about it, okay? How can, I, how can we miss the opportunity then to tell people about our faith if it's that important, that crucial in our lives? Okay, for, finally, the fourth thing that we're praying for is the right people. Praying for the right people. That doesn't mean like, hey, Lord, like, I just want good people that are going to like, say yes to come by and that I like, you know, like, like bring all the good ones to me. It's saying, pray for the right people, Lord, that you have prepared for me to reach out to. Bring the, the people that you have invited me to share my life story with, or 30 seconds, 30 beautiful seconds of, with this person. The right people. And that we have the eyes to see who the right people are. Because, friends, 30 seconds of explaining why we have the hope that we have, and remember, this is all about hope, okay? And we have hope because we have joy, because we have freedom, because we have salvation, because we have light. Okay, it's all there, okay? Why we have hope. You have 30 seconds. Pray for the right people. Jesus said, or Paul says, um, act wisely towards outsiders. That's a really kind of a, a culturally um, awkward way to say it, but he's essentially saying, like, like, wisdom to see the opportunity that's before you to share with this person in the most holy ways that you can. And I don't mean perfect ways when I say holy. I mean filled with the Holy Spirit. Boom, he's doing the work, not you. Okay? So when you, when you look at 1 Peter and you say, well, how do I be prepared? How do I always be prepared to be able to give an answer or response when someone asks me why I have this hope? The answer starts with prayer. Okay? And we've done all this is, this is some, we've done a lot of that work about learning our story, learning God's story in the midst of our story, that we then pray. And I mean, and again, I'm not saying that you have to spend an hour in prayer every day. That would be awesome. I would encourage you to get there. Okay, it's worth it. That's a conversation with God. It's not just like being good or do, being right. Okay, but what I am saying is, before you get to the full hour, like spend 30 beautiful seconds asking God, Hey. Show me the right opportunities and give me the right words for the right people today. Just help me see the people that you brought me before me today. That didn't even take 30 seconds, okay? Because praying ultimately prepares our heart, okay? When we're prayerful about it, we are preparing for it. And it also, in the act of our praying and communing with God in that, it lets God know that our heart's ready. 
It lets God know that our heart's ready. And when those two meet, when our hearts are ready, and, and God knows that our hearts are ready, watch your life because, friends, it's amazing. God will bring people into your life. Friends in high school, I mean, like, you have the perfect opportunity to witness to that. Okay, your heart's on fire. You've had some life-changing experiences. Friends, all, all ages here, you never know. But when those two things align, it starts working. It starts going. So now it's time to start connecting. I, I, mean, I, I feel like this has, like, been boot camp, and finally I'm giving you the boot. Like, go out and do it, right? And you're like... <laughs> Please, drill sergeant, can we just stay here? Like, but, but here's the thing. It's time. And it's not a matter of you being incompetent as much as it is a matter of you simply not having yet taken the step that you're learning today to prepare your heart. So I wanna, I'm, giving you the, I'm giving you the boot today to start going out and connecting. But first, I want to send you off with three more things here. First thing that I want you to know is that you are here today you are here today, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm making up a statistic here, so don't go quote me on this, but I'm guessing at least 90% of you, and the other 10% of you are weird people who just walked in. Um, sorry, you're not weird, but that was a weird thing that happened, okay? Um, 90% of you are here today because someone else led you to this. You're, you're, you know who Jesus is. You, you have given yourself to Jesus because of someone else's friendship and connection in your life. And it might be your parents, right? Okay, so apply that to your own lives, okay? It might be a friend. It might be a coworker. It might be, an, uh, you know, whatever it is, a boss or someone like that, or someone you actually particularly didn't like. But, uh, whoever it is, someone was in your life to the capacity that you are here today. And I said to the rest of you that kind of just like woke up one morning and said, hey, we should go to that church around the corner. Like, that's cool too. And that begins your story. But here's the thing. By choosing not to connect or kind of passing off and saying, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of nervous. That's not really my gift. Um, by choosing not to connect breaks that cycle breaks that, that chain someone brought you. And so if you don't have a chance to invite, connect, welcome someone else into that life, who will? Jesus says even the rocks will cry out. Okay, that's number one. The second thing that you need to know is that you are a seed planter and you are a plant waterer. I don't even know if that's, you know, but you are a seed planter and a, and a plant waterer. You are not miracle grow or the miracle maker, okay? So sometimes when we think about sharing those 30 beautiful seconds with someone, we're like, well, like, I don't know. They're probably going to say no, and then, you know, it's over, and I'm going to fail. If you are planting seeds and you are watering plants, friends, it is your opportunity to speak another 30 seconds of that truth, that life, that light, that freedom into someone's life that's going to bring them along into their own life-changed, life-changership, okay? You are a seed planter and a plant waterer. Third thing is, is that Jesus says in John's gospel particularly, he says, I have come, the, the thief, like Satan, wants to come into your life and, and just kind of steal everything that's good. And Jesus says, okay, I'm different than that. I have come to give you life and life to the fullest, life abundantly, okay? Here's the thing. And then Jesus, when he's, when he's, uh, when he's crucified, resurrected, comes back to the disciples, what is he saying to the disciples? Is he saying, hey, look, um, I'm going to be gone, but just live your lives as blessed as you can because that's the fullness of the gospel. Like, I've done my work here, and you 12, you got it. We won. No, Jesus says, go and preach my good news. Go and love on the world. So ultimately, what we know is when Jesus says, live your life, I've come to give you life to the fullest, Sharing your story, connecting with others is part of the fullness, the definition of fullness that Jesus offers us. Therefore, that if you, if, that your life isn't full until it matters to someone else. Your life has not received the fullness of what Jesus is intending to give us until that life matters to someone else. So I invite you, start praying. Start watching. Start sharing. Go over your story. Just one more time. Share it with your friends or your, your kids 
or kids, share it with your parents. Share your life change story. What does that look like? So that way, you know, we're, we're all familiar with that 30 seconds that we can just let out and let the Holy Spirit work with. Let's pray.